This is going to be titled, Seven Reasons Why Johnny Lost to the Devil in Georgia. Living in the South over the years, I've heard the song by the Charlie Daniels band, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, many times. And as a kid, I always thought that Johnny really beat the devil in the fiddle match. And I've heard this saying that says, you know, why are you so afraid of the devil? He lost to a hillbilly out in Georgia. And there's another popular country song that says the devil went down to Georgia, but he didn't stick around. You know, pretty much saying, you know, if people down here in Georgia are better than the devil, more powerful than the devil. But one of the greatest tricks of the devil is to convince you that you aren't deceived when you actually really are deceived. Or that you're more powerful or better than you actually are. And that's exactly what he did to Johnny in that song. So here's a list of ways that Johnny really lost when the devil went down to Georgia. So the, so the song says, the devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. And that is correct. John 10.10 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. The song says he was in a bind because he was way behind, and he was willing to make a deal. You know, in the tribulation, the devil is even going to know he hath but a short time. So most likely, he probably already knows he's got a short time, and he's just going around, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. But the first reason Johnny really lost to the devil he just thought he won. The first reason he really lost is because the devil got Johnny to sin. The song says, the devil says, I'll, I'll bet a fiddle of gold against your soul because I think I'm better than you. The boy said, my name's Johnny and it might be a sin. He says, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best that's ever been. So he said, my name's Johnny, and it might be a sin. Once he gets you to sin, he got victory on you. It was over before it started. Before he even started playing the fiddle, he had already lost. The devil already got him to sin. It was over before it started. Compare Johnny's interaction with the devil compared to the Lord Jesus and his interaction with the devil. In Matthew 4, look at Matthew chapter 4. It says, in Matthew 4, 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So Jesus, he's not going to give in to the temptation. He's going to simply quote scripture for everything the devil says. It says in verse 2, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And now here comes the serpent to make a deal. He's hunting souls. And if he can get the Son of God to sin, then he can damn every soul. And it says in verse 3, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made, made bread. The devil's like, Come on, Jesus, you're hungry. Turn the stones into a piece of bread and eat. Don't you know it's not good for you to go that long without eating? Don't you know that's not good for your health? I mean, come on, turn the stone into bread and get you a bite to eat. A little bit won't hurt. You know, everybody else is eating today. Why can't you eat? And the Lord just simply quotes a verse. He says, but he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hiding the word of God in your heart is how you defeat the devil. When you're tempted, you just quote a verse. And that's why Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have an high priest, which is Jesus, which cannot, be touch, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He came out a lot better than Johnny did because Johnny said, you know, when the devil was trying to make a deal with him, he says, My name's Johnny, and it might be a sin. He didn't care whether it was a sin or not. He was going to do it just to prove that he could do it. That's one of the big differences between Jesus and Johnny, between Jesus and us. Johnny sinned when he was tempted. Jesus didn't. Johnny gave in to the lust of the flesh. Jesus didn't even come close. 
So the first reason Johnny lost is because he, the devil got Johnny to sin before they even started playing their instrument. The next thing is he exposed, he exposed Johnny's pride. When the devil got Johnny to sin, he exposed his sinful pride. Johnny says to the devil, My name's Johnny. It might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best that's ever been. The devil just exposed Johnny's pride. Notice the devil says, he said to Johnny, because I think I'm better than you. You know, the devil knows how to get under your skin. Uh, he can see if you're one of these people that has to be the best, has to be the greatest. So he's coming to Johnny and says, I think I'm better than you. Johnny was so cocky, he thought he was better than the devil himself. And one of the qualifications for a pastor in 1 Timothy 3, 6 says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Uh, and it talks about getting into the snare of the devil. You can be so cocky that you just walk right into the devil's trap. And that's what Johnny did. It says in Galatians 6, 3, For if a man think himself to be something... When he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. He goes after the pride of Johnny. And the devil knows the desire of men and how they want to be the greatest, just like the disciples in uh, Mark 9, 34. But they, it says, But they held their peace, for by, the, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. What does man want to do? He wants to be the greatest ever, the greatest of all time. The goat, that's what, you know, they say he's, he is the goat, the greatest of all time. And the devil tempts a man with three things. In 1 John 2, 16, every sin that the devil tempts you with will fall into three categories. In 1 John 2, 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. He's now tempting Johnny with the pride of life, saying, if you're the greatest, then play me. He says, because I think I'm better than you, Johnny. And Johnny says, well, I'm the best that's ever been. You see, he's tempting Johnny with the pride of life, just like he did Jesus in Matthew 4, 5 through 6. The next thing he says to Jesus uh, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If, if, notice that little word, if thou be the Son of God, you know, not he knows, see, he, he knows Jesus is the Son of God, but he's, he's saying it like this to Jesus to tempt him, you know, if you're really who you say you are, then do this. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels car charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dost thou put against a stone. He's saying, If you're really the Son of God, then cast thyself down. You know, prove it. Let's see if you really are. I don't really believe it, is basically what he's saying. You see, that would be a huge temptation for the Lord to just take a mountain and just throw it on top of the devil and smash him and just kill him before he's even supposed to be killed. You know, that would be a temptation. But all he said in Matthew 4, 7 is, it is written again, thou shalt not tend the Lord thy God. He doesn't just give the devil what he wants. He doesn't go back and forth with him. He just quotes scripture and it knocks the devil out every time. If he was to just argue back with the devil and everything else, he's giving the devil exactly what he wants. But Johnny, he sinned. He lost because he got his pride exposed. Now the next thing, we know Johnny really lost because Johnny counted the fiddle of gold more valuable than his own soul. Because the devil says, and if you win, you get this shiny fiddle made of gold. But if you lose, the devil gets your soul. You see, the devil didn't care anything about some gold fiddle. He had tabrets and pipes and gold 
built into his very being. The fact that Johnny accepted the challenge shows that he didn't understand the value of his soul, not even his own. He thought that that, that shiny gold fiddle was more valuable. Johnny was overtaken by the next category of sin that the devil tempts you with, the lust of the eyes. And the devil knows that man likes what he sees, especially gold. You see, he's coming at Johnny with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And he says in, it says in the Bible in Exodus twenty twenty three, showing you that man has a problem with his eyes. He's got an eye problem. He likes what he sees. And when he sees something he likes, he's enticed, and he, he wants it, he lusts after it, and then he takes it. That's the process of sin. And it says in Exodus twenty twenty three, You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. You see, man has a problem with taking the material things, the, th the things he sees in this life, and turning that into his, uh, his God, and having that a God that he can actually see and worship. In Exodus 32, 31, And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. The devil pretty much put a shiny little gold god in front of Johnny and tempted him with that. The lust of the eyes. Deuteronomy 7.25 The graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Daniel 5.4 They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, and of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. See, man, the devil knows from experience that man loves gods of gold. Proverbs twenty-seven twenty it says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. You think the devil don't know that? That he can get you with the lust of the eyes? The devil also tried the lust of the eyes trick on Jesus Christ, and he failed miserably. In that way as well. In Matthew 4, 8 through 11, it says, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and, and the glory of them. He showed him all of it. Everything in the world, he showed it to him. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if that will fall down and worship me. So he showed Jesus everything trying to get him with the lust of the eyes. He's like, look at all this stuff. It can all be yours. I got the power to give it to you. Just one thing. You got to fall down and worship me as God. But what yes, then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He didn't argue. He just quoted scripture. And after that third time of the devil trying to tempt him, it says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The devil should have known better than to offer the kingdom to Jesus Christ because Jesus already knew he was going to get them anyway. When the devil offers you gold in this world, uh, turn it down. He, if you turn it down, you're just going to get the gold anyway. You'll get up to the judgment seat of Christ, and your good works will come out as gold. Don't take the temporary gold down here. Don't take the corruptible crowns down here. You're, you're running the race for an incorruptible crown. But there was nothing on this world that looked good enough, smelled good enough, sounded good enough, or that Jesus desired enough that he would trade his own soul for it. In Mark eight thirty six, it says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. Johnny didn't realize it, but the devil was just trying to put the clamps on his soul. And Johnny felt like that golden fiddle was more valuable than his own soul. Now, the next way Johnny lost is Johnny cursed God. And I bet you've never thought about it like this when you heard the song, but Johnny actually curses God. And that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. Uh, notice what Johnny says. After he supposedly 
beats the devil, after the devil leads him on and makes him think he actually won, he says, I done told you once, you son of a blank. I'm the best that's ever been. He calls the devil a son of a blank. That is what Johnny said after he supposedly beat the devil. He called him a son of a blank. Now, the devil doesn't have a mother to be a son of a blank. But who is his father? Well, it would be the Lord. The Lord is the one who made him. God created all the principalities and powers. He created all the cherubim. The devil was the anointed cherub. The Lord created all the seraphim, all the angels. The Lord is the one who made them. And direct creations from God, like the cherubim, the seraphim, the angels, they're sons of God. The Bible calls them sons of God in Genesis 6. The Bible calls them sons of God in Job 38. The Bible calls them sons of God in Job chapter 1 and 2. Satan is a son of God. He's not sons of God like we are. We're born again. We became sons of God when we got born again. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. Angels aren't begotten sons, but they're sons of God because they're direct creations from God. Adam was called the son of God in Luke 3.38 because he didn't have an earthly father. He, he, he was a direct creation from God himself. The devil is a son of God. And when Johnny called the devil a son of a blank, he's calling God that. And he may not even realize it. Most likely didn't even realize it. But if Johnny was that cocky and thought he could beat the devil, he thought he could probably beat God himself. Johnny should have been watching his words. He fell right into the devil's trap. The devil got Johnny to do what he never could get Job to do, what he never could get Jesus to do. Uh, when talking to the Lord about Job in Job 1.11, the devil says, Put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. The devil got Job's wife to say this in Job 2 and verse 9, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. One of the things the devil wants to do when he's tempting you, what he wants you to do, one of his main goals is to get you to curse God, blame God, and go against God. And he got Johnny to do it. Johnny probably didn't even really realize it. So that's another way Johnny lost when the devil went down to Georgia. And then another way is he didn't use his talent for the Lord. You see, God gives men talents and abilities. His desire is for you to use those talents and abilities for him. Johnny was a good musician, but he used his talent for himself. And if you use it for yourself, then you're using it for the devil without even knowing it. Notice some people who use their talent to influence people to worship images in the Bible. A talent of music. You see, back in Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar is uh, getting all these people to play these instruments and when the people hear these instruments playing, they got to fall down and worship an image. It says in Daniel 3, 5, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And I'm sure he went around the kingdom and got the best flute players, the best harp players, the best cornet players, and he got them to use their talents for a wicked and evil purpose. And they probably got fame and money and everything else for it. It's no different than what's going on today. You got all these wicked musicians that have some talent. And they're using their talent for the devil to get people to worship the devil without even knowing it. And of course. A character named King Saul in the Old Testament is a top of the Antichrist, right? And when he, it says, when he sees any valiant man 
he takes them unto him. In 1 Samuel fourteen fifty two, it says, And there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or valiant man, he took him unto him. And that picture is how any time the devil sees somebody with talent, abilities, looks, he's going to go and tempt that person and see if he can get them to go on his side and work in his favor. That way, somebody like that can easily influence thousands and thousands of people. You see, Johnny should have tried out for a gospel bluegrass band or something instead of doing something like this. He could have used those fiddle talents for the Lord. Instead, he used it for himself, thinking he could defeat the devil. Now, the next thing, another way that we know that Johnny really lost when the devil went down to Georgia is because he did not say, the Lord rebuke thee. Before it even started, before any instrument had even been played, he should have just said, the Lord rebuke thee, Satan. But Johnny was so prideful that he forgot about rule number one. When the devil comes at you, you don't fight him in your own strength. You simply say, the Lord rebuke thee. And that's what Michael the archangel did. And, in Jude 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. That's good advice on what to do. That's a good example to follow. The head angel didn't try to mess with the devil. He just said, The Lord rebuke thee. And I'm not even so sure that the the that the devil is actually physically more powerful than Michael. Because you'll see in the Bible how Michael actually prevails against the dragon, the devil, and his angels. But it, that wouldn't have been at the right time there for him to go after the devil and attack him. You see, just like it wouldn't have been the right time for Jesus to take the kingdoms back when the devil offered it to him. Here, it wouldn't have been the right time for Michael to fight the devil. So he didn't. He just said, the Lord rebuke thee. And it's never the right time for you to try to face the devil. You just say, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, the last thing is, we know that Johnny is defeated by the devil because he gives place to the devil. It says in the song, and he laid that golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. And Johnny said, Devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. Notice the open invitation for the devil to come right on back. Johnny has reached a new level of cockiness after this. You see, the devil has gave him a new, even more level of confidence. And you, you see, the devil will feed your ego and let you think that you won. Let you think that you're so good. Let you think you're so better than everybody else and on another level. He'll put you in a state of mind that you're God. It's like a dad letting his son beat him in basketball. You got a what? A six foot three dad and a four foot kid. And the kid thinks that he actually beat his dad. Who's that much bigger, stronger, and taller. How in the world does the son think he can actually beat his dad? How does Johnny actually think that he beat the devil? In your sinful flesh, your human mortal body on this earth, there's no way you can defeat uh, the principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. With your physical talents, and your physical strength, there's no way you wouldn't have a chance. But Johnny is so lifted up in pride that he gives the devil an invitation to come back for a rematch. And he left the door open for the devil. He gave him the passcode back into his life. He gave the devil an open door. And Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place to the devil. But Johnny does. That's that's another reason why we know he lost. You see, if you're, when you're going against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
you can't do it in your own strength. You, you, you must put on the whole armor of God. You got to use the spiritual sword, the word of God. You have to use the shield of faith. All these are spiritual things. You can't go against them physically. You might be, you're going to be able to when you get your glorified body. But right now, the Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, here's how you go against these principalities and powers. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You got to be strong in the Lord, not in your own strength. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak you see all this whole armor of god has nothing to do with you being good uh having a lot of strength being strong in yourself it's all about being strong in the lord and in the power of his might and if you don't put on this spiritual armor of god every day there's no way you'll stand a chance against the wiles of the devil johnny was so cocky lifted up in pride he thought he could defeat the devil he thought he actually won. But if Johnny never got saved, he opened his eyes in hell. He thought he had his soul. The devil walked away that day laughing with Johnny's soul in his pocket. He didn't care about a golden fiddle. You see, all those years, you thought Johnny really won when the devil went down to Georgia. But now you found out the, the, you, you found out Johnny actually lost. And the devil won. Because you can't play games with the devil.